In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a cinematic Navi character, create a dynamic background for it, and use a free Lightref tool to seamlessly blend them together. Hello, I'm Lenny from Digital Magic, and before we start with the tutorial, I want to share my experiences with you about how five aspects of the base video can affect the consistency of the AI video. When I'm searching for videos on Instagram or Pexels.com, I'm always looking for shots with a lot of depth of field. I noticed in my Steampunk Cat video that when the background is blurry and the character is super clear, it makes the AI video look much better. You can also see that the floor has lots of details, and this makes the floor in the AI video flicker more. And in the next video where the floor is very even, you can see that the floor in the AI video flickers less and is much more consistent. While making the Lego person video, I found out I should pick videos where the character's arms or hands don't cover their face. In simple words, too much wild movement make the videos less consistent. When you are recording yourself, use a black background or a green screen or a tool like Magic Mask in Resolve or the green screen feature in Runway ML to remove your background. When you give the AI less details, it makes your video more consistent. Then you can add in a consistent dynamic background later, like we are doing in this tutorial. Think carefully about what you wear, how you style your hair, or what hat you choose. In the videos where I transformed into a girl, you can clearly see that wearing a simple hat gave me more consistent images compared to where I wore a highly detailed plastic hat. If you are talking while you are recording yourself, make sure to speak clearly and open your mouth wide enough so the AI can recognize different mouth movements. Especially when you're making a cinematic character that looks very different from your own face, the AI can sometimes have trouble following mouth movements. You can see that in this video, where it's very difficult to see that I'm actually speaking. I am an AI actor. You can also make the AI follow the lip movements closer to the original video by adjusting the start and end settings of the control weight, as you can see in this comparison video. And later in this video, I will talk more in depth about this when we get to the part where we will create the Navi character. So now you know why I was wearing this funny hat and why I was without a t-shirt. It was all to help the AI make more consistent videos. So now I'm going to create the dynamic background with Layapix. I found out about this cool tool from a video by Obscurious and I was really impressed with the fantastic depth animations he created. After creating a free account at Layapix, it's as easy as clicking the upload button, selecting a still image and then it automatically creates this amazing depth animation for you. This is a bit too active for me, because I just want a tiny bit of movement to enhance my shot. So I'm going to open up the animation length and set it to 5 seconds. Then I'll change the animation style to horizontal and set the amount of motion to regular. If you want to adjust the direction values manually, you can go to the advanced tab. And if you are familiar with any 3D programs, then you are familiar with the X, Y and Z axis. The X stands for width, the Y stands for height and the Z represents depth. So to download the image, click on the share icon and then select the mp4 option and save it. Now we will create the Navi character, but not in the usual way like in my earlier tutorials, because my subscribers have seen this already plenty of times. We are going to download my free settings files, which you can find if you follow the link in the description. And then we will load these settings in the Deforum tab in Stable Diffusion. If you haven't installed Stable Diffusion or Deforum, or you're not familiar with how to install models or LoRa's, then make sure to watch these two videos at my YouTube channel. Now type 0 here and click the Get Now button. Once you have been through checkout, you can download the base Deforum settings file and the Navi Avatar settings file. Before we load the settings files, I want to let my subscribers know that in the next chapter of this video, I will talk more in depth about the start and ending settings in the control net weight. Now to load the base Deforum settings file, we're going to copy the path and then we're going to paste it in here and then press the load all settings button. Next, we will move all the info from the image to image tab using the Navi avatar settings file, as it holds all links to the morals, the loras and the settings that I used. In the run tab, I set the sampler to Euler A, the width to 576 and the height to 1024 and leave the steps to 20. In the keyframes tab, I can go to the CFG tab and there I will change the CFG scale to 3. Now I'm going to select my prompt and I'm going to go to the prompt step and now I'm going to add it in here. Make sure to leave these quotes because otherwise it won't work. Now I'm going to copy my negative prompt and I'm going to paste it in here. So now we're going to move the information to the control net. Enable the first control net model, select pixel perfect, set the preprocessor to none, the model to control tile, 
Weight schedule to 1 and the starting control step to 0.4. Make sure to leave control net is more important. Now we're gonna go to the second control net model. Enable it, don't select pixel perfect, set the preprocessor to none and the model to temporal net. Leave the weight schedule to 1 and make sure to set control net is more important. In the comment section of my last video, some viewers mentioned that if you load the base deform settings file, sometimes the init tab automatically loads an init picture. So to solve this, go to the init tab, uncheck use init, and then to be sure, delete this as well. Then go to the video init, and now we're going to copy the path of my video by clicking here. And then I'm going to paste it in here, and now make sure to delete these quotes, because otherwise it won't work. Last thing to do is to go to the output tab and set the frames per second to the ones of your base video. Now we could hit the generate button, but before that I want to talk about the start and ending times from the weight in the tile control net. As I mentioned before, this can help achieve better lip sync. If you set the start to zero and the end to one, this means that the tile control net will stop working from the beginning to make sure that the AI image stays very close to the base video. And then you get a result like this, where it follows the lip sync almost 100%. But unfortunately, the image won't be very close to the prompt that I created. If you set the start to 0.2 and the end to 1, then the tile controller will start working after 20% of the process. And then you can see that there's already a bit more of the prompt in my image. If you set the start to 0.4 and the end one to 1, then it will start working after 40% of the process. And then you can see that my image gets even more close to my prompt. If you set the start to 0.7, then it will start working after 70% of the process. And now you can see it is very close to the prompt, but I am 100% sure that it will create a lot of flickering, especially here, and it won't be consistent. If I put all three of them next to each other, you can clearly see that the lip sync is best at 0.2 and the creation of the prompt is much better at 0.7. One more tip for getting good results is to check your images after you press the generate button. You can find your images in this folder. Then I click on the first image in there, and then I go to the little triangle and then it starts rolling. And then I'm gonna see if it looks right. And if it looks good, then I let it continue. But if I don't like what I see, then I hit the interrupt button, delete the folder and hit generate again. So now let's seamlessly blend this character onto my dynamic background with my free light wrap tool, which you can find by following the link in the description. So as mentioned before, it is free to download, but if you can contribute, then all donations are being greatly appreciated. After downloading the settings file, open up the fusion tab Open up the effects tab, then here in tools, go to macros, then click just a node and then click on these three dots and show folder. Then this folder will turn up. Now you can drag the settings file in here and now you see it, Lightwrap Digital Magic. This tool, which is a macro in fusion terms, works in the free and the studio version. Now in the edit tab in Resolve, select the foreground and the background image, right click and select new fusion clip. Then go to the Fusion tab. For this to work, I must clear the background for my Navi character. And I'm going to use the Magic Mask tool for this. The Magic Mask tool is only available in the studio version, which is why I'm not going to show it how to use it in this video. You can also remove the background with the green screen feature in Runway ML. And if you have filmed yourself on a black background or a green screen, there's a free option in Stable Diffusion. And in this video, I explain how to install the depth map extension at 2.13 and demonstrate how to use it to create a mask from your video footage at 11.29. So for my final render, I used a different shot. Now drag the Lightwrap Digital Magic tool in here and you see it has a different name. And this is because I used to be Zupa when I created kids videos on YouTube. So I created this tool many years ago and I used it to speed up my workflow to blend my key character onto my 3D background. So to use it, you can delete the merge node. Now, if you hold the Alt key and you hover over this node, you can choose the background. Do this again and choose image background. Now the foreground goes in here, choose image foreground once again, and it goes in the foreground. And now you can drag it here in the media again and there's the result. So to show you what this does, I created an extra merge and piped in the background and the foreground and typed in two on the node. Now if I select the light wrap node and press two, you can see what it does here there's like a sort of overlap. And in the settings, I would advise you to only use these two. With this, you can change the overall blur of the light wrap. And with this, you can change how much of the background overlaps 
on the foreground. But in general I would go for a subtle effect, cause you don't want it to be visible too much. To further match the foreground with the background, I've got a very quick solution in the color tab of Resolve. To make this work, ensure you have both your fusion clip and a separate clip from your background video on the timeline. Then head over to the color tab, now select the clip that you want to grade, and control clip the clip you want to use the grade from. Now right click and choose shot match to this clip. Now the whole video has the color grading from the background video, which makes my foreground character blend in even better. So now we can watch the final result. I am an AI actor. I am an AI actor. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you want to know more about creating AR characters from your own base footage, then make sure to watch these two videos.